So if you didn't know, the game Inscription received a new expansion called Casey's Mod, which adds challenge runs to the game. And I've been kind of addicted to this game the past few days, because it lets you play through Act 1 all over again, but at a higher difficulty. The other day, I managed to beat challenge level 12, which is the highest challenge level at the moment. So I wanted to make this video to show you my playthrough and talk about the strategies that I used to beat it. Now to get 120 challenge points, I am running Squirrelfish, Weak Start, More Difficult Times 2, No Boss Rears, All Totem Battles and Boss Totem Battles, Pricey Pelts, and No Hook. And I'm using these ones specifically because I feel that they allow the deck to be as consistent as possible while still hitting 120 challenge points. So you can probably tell from the starting hand that this deck is going to revolve entirely around the Mantis God. Now, even though I took the weak start challenge, the Mantis God already starts at 1 health anyway, so it's already weak enough. That's why immediately, I'm going to look for either the Field Mice or the Cockroach to take the Fecundity or Unkillable Sigil. Unfortunately, I don't start with Sizer cards, but I also can't complain about getting the Magpie. Since the Mantis God is the only card that does any damage, it's going to be a huge problem if I don't draw the Mantis God. So the Magpie's Hoarder Sigil will come in handy. And I'll just take the Elk Fong because it's a 1 blood card. So it looks like the first encounter is going to be the Backpack, which I'm completely fine with because I took the No Hook Challenge. So this lets me get the third item. Also, the hook isn't that important to this deck strategy because I only use items as a last resort. So I'll just go for a scroll here. Now, the central strategy that I'm going to be using for this deck is simply to win in the first one or two turns. And the Mantis God is the perfect card for this because it's a one blood card that deals three damage thanks to its trifurcated strike sigil. Personally, I think this strategy is the most consistent way to win battles at challenge level 12, because Leshy's advantage is that he doesn't have to sacrifice for summons like you do, so in longer fights, he'll just overwhelm you and zerg you to death. But your advantage is that you always go first. So basically, I'm trying to maximize my advantage and win before he has a chance to use his advantage. Okay, so next up is a random card encounter. But since I kept my clover, I can re-roll the random cards to give me 6 chances to try and get the field mice or the cockroach. But here, I actually got kind of bad RNG, because all 3 card choices are 2 blood, and I don't really want that because I'm not running any cards with worthy sacrifice or many lives. But I'll take the elk because at least it has a sigil, which will allow me to get rid of it later at the sigil altar. So the next encounter is the woodcarver, which is potentially another opportunity for me to get fecundity or unkillable. But she's kind of unreliable because I need to visit her at least twice and get both the correct sigil body piece as well as the insect head piece. Like in this case, I didn't get either piece I needed. So all I can do here is take the touch of death sigil since I could at least put it to some use if I manage to get the insect head piece later. Okay, next battle. And I'm up against the elk and the mole. I don't like this situation because the elk can easily kill my mantis god and the mole prevents me from winning in just two turns. But if I put my mantis god in front of the mole, then they'll at least survive because the mole will block the elk from moving in front of the mantis god. So now the only other cards I have are the ringworm and the elk. And that's kind of why I didn't want the elk, because now I can't do anything else this turn. So all I can do is take 2 damage and bring the mole down to 1 health. But since I have the elk, I might as well draw another squirrel and sack both squirrels to summon it. And what will happen now is that my elk will do 2 damage, the mantis god will kill the mole and also do 2 damage, my elk moves and I take 2 damage back from his elk, leaving me with a net positive of 1 damage. And the funny thing is, because he has the Waterborn Hoot Totem, I actually do 5 damage now, and I win this turn. And that's kind of why I take both Totem Battle Challenges, because more often than not, his Totem either does nothing or actually just makes it easier for me to win. Now, my next choice is the Campfire Path or the Citro Altar Path. And I'm going to go down the Campfire Path, and I'll explain why in a bit. But first, I still need to roll for the Cockroach or Field Mice. And it looks like my best choice here is just going to be a Mantis which isn't what I want right now, but it's still a decent option. But now that I've reached the campfire, I can actually do something about those ringworms that I got at the start. The campfire will let me enhance a card twice, but the second time, there is a chance that the card gets permanently removed from my deck. So either I get a slightly more useful ringworm, or I lose it for good, which is a win-win situation either way for me. And it looks like I got a 2-1 ringworm, which isn't the best card, but it's good enough for map 1. So I'm looking at the map, and I see that there are two campfires up ahead. If I had known that, then I would've just gone to the Sigil Altar earlier, but that's just RNG for you, so let's just go ahead and start the battle. Okay, I don't draw the Mantis God this time, but I do draw the Magpie. Which, of course, if I had gone down to the Sigil Altar earlier, then I could've actually transferred it and gotten out the Mantis God. But hindsight is 2020. So I'll just get the Elk Fawn now, do 1 damage, and take 2 from the Raven, leaving me at negative 1. And hey, at least I drew the Ringworm that I enhanced at the campfire earlier. So now I get a fully grown elk and a 2 damage ringworm, 
and I can start working on killing the Raven and the Mo. So I take 2 more damage, leaving me at negative 3, but both the Raven and the Mo dies this turn, and no other cards are coming. And actually, I've already won, because I'm doing 4 damage per turn, so I'll be at plus 1 damage this turn, and then even if he tries to summon anything next turn, it won't arrive in time for me to do 4 more damage and win. But that definitely was not ideal, because the Mantis God was kind of buried deep in my deck, so that's something that I'm going to have to keep in mind for later. But first, a random tribe card encounter. Now, I don't particularly like this encounter, because all I can do here is roll for the tribe, not the card itself, and the field mice doesn't belong to any tribe. But if I had to choose, I guess I'll go for insect or avian, because I can either get a cockroach with insect, or a magpie with avian. Instead, all I get is a raven egg though, so that's kind of not good, but at least it's a one blood card. So I'm going to go to the campfire, because personally, I think that it's more consistent than the woodcarver, and I still have a useless ringworm to get rid of. So I'll use the other 0-1 ringworm, enhance it twice, and this time the survivors ate it. Good. This is actually exactly what I want. The survivors have activated my trap card. Because now, when I go to the next campfire, you'll see that every survivor is dead after eating the ringworm. Now I can freely enhance my Mantis God with no risk of it getting eaten, giving me a guaranteed 3-1 Mantis God, which can do 9 damage on my first turn. But right now, it's boss time. And I'm starting with the Trapper boss. This is kind of unfortunate, because I actually can't use the Mantis God in Phase 1, since no matter where I put it, it's going to get killed. This is why the Fecundity or Unkillable Seizure on the Mantis God is so important for my strategy, because both the Trapper and the Prospector have mechanics to instant kill your cards in Phase 1. So I want one of those sigils to keep the Mantis God alive. But actually, I didn't draw the Mantis God anyway. Funnily enough though, the Elk is actually the perfect card for this boss, because they can just start from the left and solo every frog one by one. I got kind of lucky here, because I didn't want the Elk initially, but since I drew it, I might as well just let it do its thing. I mean, if I didn't have the Elk, I could have just used the Ringworm or the Mantis to deal with the frog, so this was kind of a nice coincidence, but it's not really a strategy that I'm going to be relying on. So I'm just going to keep drawing cards. And I'm only taking a maximum of 1 damage here, so I'm completely safe and don't need to worry about playing anything else. So now the elk killed the last frog and reached the last leaping trap. It will attack it and turn into a wolf pelt, but that's okay, because I got the mantis god now. However, I actually don't want to summon it just yet, and you'll see why in a moment. Right now I'm at negative 1 damage, so let's just draw a squirrel and pass this turn. And he summons a bullfrog, which I'll have to deal with. Okay, I'm just going to draw and pass again and take 1 damage, putting me at negative 2, which is okay. But now I can use the 2-1 Ringworm to kill the frog, and then after that, what I'm going to do is place a squirrel in front of every trap, and then attack with the Mantis God. Because the way the trap works is that it kills the card that's in front of it, not the card that attacked it. So if I place the Mantis God in the middle, I can make use of the Trifurcated Strike Sigil to trigger the trap on the left and right side. The traps will kill the two squirrels I place down, while the Mantis God easily deals with the regular bullfrog in front of it. So I get two more wolf pelts and my Mantis God lives and now I can attack and finish him off. What I'm doing in this part is very important, because I'm setting up for phase 2 of the boss, where he will announce that the skinny knife turns, and it's revealed that the trapper and the traitor are actually the same person. Plot twist, right? But anyway, in this phase, he will spawn 8 cards, but for every pelt in your hand, you can take one of his cards before the battle begins. You get one pelt for free, and with 3 pelt that I got in phase 1, I can just completely wipe out his front row immediately. And then it's my turn again, so his back row doesn't even get time to move to the front. Now I just attack for the win with my 9 damage Mantis God, or I can even summon some of his cards, so I could have won even if my Mantis God was still 1 power. And now, it's time for the reward for beating the boss. But since I took the no boss rare challenge, I just get 3 random cards. But this is actually not the worst thing in the world, because most of the rare cards don't really fit within my strategy, and the 3 random common cards could also be a field mice or a cockroach or even a magpie. But it looks like these are my choices, which isn't ideal, and I also can't clover the boss cards. So I'm thinking either I could take a second Elk Fawn and merge them out of my Colleges later, or I can take a Porcupine, which is 2 health, but I can use it to kind of stall out the turn. So I'm taking the Porcupine here, but honestly, I feel like both are equally good choices depending on the RNG later. Alright, on to map 2. I am now embarking upon the Woodlands. Now, the very first encounter here is the Trial, which is really good. Not because of what I can get, but because of what I can AVOID getting. Basically, my Mantis God is so good right now, that's all I need to win the battle, and getting new cards literally makes my deck worse. My ideal deck is really just the one Mantis God, and I simply draw it first turn every time and win instantly with every battle. So the trick here 
is that I actually want to intentionally fail the trial, because then I don't get new cards, which lets me more easily draw the Mantis God. So right now, I'm looking for the trial where I am least likely to pass. So for the trial of blood, I have two ways to pass. I can either draw a magpie, or I can draw the elk, both of which are two blood cards. And since every other card I have is a one blood card, then as soon as I draw either card, I'm guaranteed to pass the trial no matter what else I draw. For the trial of health, there's only one way to pass, and that's by drawing the elk, which has four health. Because even if I draw both the raven egg and the porcupine, any other cards except the elk would only get me up to five health. But as soon as I draw the elk, then no matter what else I draw, I'm guaranteed to pass. Because even if I draw two cards with one health, it would still add up to six. So drawing the elk is the only way to pass the trial of blood. The trial of kin is kind of hard to calculate for, because I have three insects, two avians, and two hooved cards, and any combination of those could pass. The first two trials are a pretty simple calculation, giving me around 64% chance to pass the trial of blood and 38% chance to pass the trial of health, but I'm not going to bother calculating for the trial of kin. If I were to run a simulation though, then it comes out to about 50% chance to pass the trial of kin with my deck, so the trial of health is the way to go here. So I got fawn, porcupine, raven egg, which is only 5. Good, that's what I wanted. Now, the only way forward here is the left path, because if I were to go right, then I would be forced to take a pack rat from the backpack encounter, since I have 3 items already, and I don't want that. Plus, at the Bone Lord's Altar, I can get rid of the Elk now since it served its purpose in the battle against the Trapper already. This brings my deck down to 7 cards for the next battle. And because of how thin my deck is now, I have something like a 43% chance of winning first turn, because I always start with 3 cards plus a squirrel. So anytime I draw the Mantis God, I'm immediately opening with 9 damage before Leshy can even do anything. So now I pretty much negate the effects of the All Totem Battle Challenge, as well as both more difficult challenges, because I'm just winning before the challenges even have time to kick in. And this is really good, because I'm basically getting 50 challenge points from these 3 challenges completely for free now, without them making my run any harder than it should be. Okay, next up is another trial encounter, which is perfect. Same idea here. The goal is to fail the trial, not pass it. But this time, I got the Trial of Bones, which is a no-brainer. Considering I don't have any bone cards in my deck right now, it's literally impossible for me to pass this trial, so I get to keep my deck at 7 cards. Reducing the number of cards and making sure I draw the Mantis God is pretty much going to be the main goal for the rest of the run. So next up is the Woodcarver again. I generally don't go to her intentionally, but if she's in my path, then I can't complain. And between taking the Fledgling Body Piece or the Insect Head Piece, I'm definitely going for the Insect Head Piece here because now I can at least use the Touch of Death totem that I got earlier. And while Fledgling is good, I'm not going to go out of my way to take it. It does give a 1 power, 2 health buff to my card after a turn passes, but I much rather just win on turn 1 instead of waiting a turn if I could help it. Okay, on to the next battle. And this time, I didn't draw the Mantis God because 43% chance still isn't that good yet. It looks like I'm up against the Dire Wolf Pup, Porcupine, and Rabbit. So it's going to be really important for me to kill the Dire Wolf Pup, because if it turns into a fully fledged dire wolf, then it's basically a 4 damage 5 health card, and I don't want to be dealing with that. But I can't attack it right now because it's in the back row, and I didn't draw my own porcupine, which would have came in handy here. So instead, I'm going to summon my raven egg so I can start doing some damage next turn, and I'll just take 1 damage and be at negative 1 this turn. Now, in this state, even if I draw the mantis god, I won't win. So I'll play it safe and use the ringworm to kill the dire wolf pup and deal 2 damage from the raven, bringing me back to plus 1. He does have another wolf coming though, which would normally be problematic, but that's why it's a good thing that I summoned the raven. Because now, I can actually summon the elk fawn, which lets me deal a total of 3 damage when combined with the raven, so I'm at plus 4. Then the elk fawn blocked the damage from the wolf, the grand fur blocks the damage from the porcupine, and then no matter what, the raven attacks for 2 damage and I win next turn. But admittedly, that was still kind of risky, which is why I need to further improve my deck's consistency. Now, I don't have any reason to go to the Mycologist, I think, because I don't have any duplicates, and although there is a chance that they will give me a duplicate Mantis God if I go there, which is decent, I much rather go right so I can avoid taking a card while getting rid of one at the Sigil Altar all at the same time. Another thing that I'm also making sure to check is whether there are any unavoidable backpack encounters up ahead on the map. Because if there are, then I need to get rid of an item in the next battle, because I want to avoid taking a pack rat. The point is to have less cards in my deck, not more. And that's why I'm failing these trials on purpose after all. So I still don't have a field mice or cockroach, which is kind of rare to not have at this point. So the obvious choice is to move the hoarder sigil from the magpie to something that will only cost 1 blood. 
And honestly, it doesn't really matter what card I put it on, because as soon as I draw the card, I'm going to be searching out my 3-1 Mantis God, and I'm going to sack that card and summon the Mantis God and just win. So I'm just going to pick the Elk Fawn arbitrarily, but anything would do. Now, what's that done? Not only am I down to only 6 cards in the deck, I now also have 2 cards that can let me win first turn. So immediately, I am up to as high as 80% chance of winning first turn. And it looks like I get to demonstrate that right away in fact. Because I didn't draw the Mantis God, but I did draw the Elk Fawn. And since it's a 1 blood card with the Hoarder Sigil, that's basically equivalent to drawing the Mantis God. Because now I just search out the Mantis God, sack the Elk Fawn, and attack with 9 damage to win the battle. So finally, I got my ideal battle. And this is exactly how I want every battle to play out going forwards. Next, I am once again offered with either the Mycologist, Sigil Altar, or Campfire. And I'm going to do the exact same thing and go right again. But this time, the Trial of Blood is the no-brainer. Cause I got rid of my Magpie just in time for the trial, so now I don't have any cards with more than one blood. So it's impossible for me to pass this trial that now requires 4 blood, no matter what cards I draw. Okay, what I need to consider now is Campfire versus Altar. However, I still don't have the Fecundity or Unkillable Sigil. So I'm actually going to take the Campfire path, because my Mantis God is still only a 3-1, and my Mantis is a 1-1. And it looks like this one's the Campfire of Health, which is good. Because if I can't have Fecundity or Unkillable, then I can at least survive by having 5 health. So now, I don't need to worry as much about potentially attacking into a card with Sharp Quill Sigil, like the Porcupine, which would have gotten the Mantis God killed. The next encounter is the Sigil Altar anyway though, and I don't really have many good options here. Potentially, I could transfer Fledgling from the Raven to the Mantis, because the funny thing is that the Fledgling Mantis turns into a Mantis God. But it's actually not that great, because it actually only ends up being a 1-1 Mantis God, rather than a 2-3, which is the buff that an Elder card would get. So I guess, just Porcupine on the Raven Egg then. I mean, it's not really going to change things much no matter what I pick here, honestly. Alright, Prospector boss time. Now, with 5 cards remaining in my deck, I am at a 90% chance to draw or search out the Mantis God first turn. But here is where the lack of fecundity or unkillable is really making things difficult. Because even though the Prospector is a quote unquote easy boss, the fact that he does a board wipe by the end of phase 1 means that I can't summon the Mantis God right now, because 5 health isn't going to help against a boss that has an instant kill mechanic. But I have a backup plan. First, I'm going to hide the Raven Egg in front of the Pack Mule so his wolf doesn't kill it. Because I want a Raven to do some damage. Next, I'll place the Elk Fawn to the right side and search out the Mantis God. This will let me do 1 damage this turn, but the main goal is really to let the Elk Fawn move to the left and block the damage from the Wolf. Now, because I'm facing against the Rampager K9 Totem, his Wolf is going to move to the right, which places it in the perfect spot to be attacked by my regular Mantis. This is where the Touch of Death Insect Totem I got from the Wood Carver earlier finally comes in handy, because my Mantis will now kill both his Pack Mule and his Wolf, while my Raven does 2 damage. I do get some cards from his mule, which is part of this boss mechanic, but that won't really be necessary, because I'm already at plus 3 damage anyways. Then I just draw a card and attack for another 3 damage and enter phase 2. Now he's gonna find gold in my cards, but that's gonna be pretty short lived for him, because he has an empty board and my 3 5 Mantis God is gonna be ending this battle very quickly with 9 damage total. And I've also made sure to not fill up my entire board with cards, because then I would end up with 4 gold nuggets and not be able to summon the Mantis God, which would be bad. Well, time to get ready for random cards again. Which I'm still looking to try and get a field mice or cockroach for the sigil by the way. I don't really need it for battles anymore since I have such a high chance to get the Mantis God first turn already, and I technically won't need it for the upcoming map 3 boss sizer, but it can be quite risky if I don't have it by the time I get to the very last boss. So that's why I'm still looking for it. But the only option that really makes sense here is the Beehive, because the Beehive can at least let me stall for a turn, because if a card attacks the Beehive then I get a Bee, which is basically a squirrel. So the idea is that if I don't have a Mantis God, I can summon the Beehive to block damage, get a Bee, and then still draw another Mantis God next turn, and then just sack the Bee, so I don't have to waste a turn to draw a squirrel. But anyways, now I am in the wetlands, and I have to consider whether I want to go for the Trial Encounter again, or the Random Card Encounter. The problem is, as much as I don't want more cards in my deck, I'm already on map 3, and I really need to get Fecundity or Unkillable before I reach the final boss. So I feel like I'm kind of forced to risk it here and go for a random card, because I barely wrote any cards on the last map. Okay, so on my first row I see a Mantis, which makes the decision even harder. I think I'm going to go take the Mantis, because I feel like getting a Mantis can at least be somewhat useful if I can find a Mycologist or transfer a Sigil, because I'm afraid that if I re rolled here I might be forced to take something even worse, and there's still a chance that the upcoming Woodcarver can maybe give me Fecundity or Unkillable. 
And I get Waterborne, which is absolutely not what I need right now, because that's not going to help me against the final boss. So I'm just going to keep Touch of Death and move on to the next battle. In retrospect, maybe I should have gambled on the random cards that I was just going with the Mantis, but honestly, I feel like no matter what choice I make here, it's going to depend on RNG. Because I could just as likely get the Field Mice for Cockroach and secure my victory, as I could get something completely useless that I can't get rid of, like a 2 or 3 blood cards, and just cause my defeat. But yeah, this is probably another Hindsight is 2020 situation, so time to just see what the next random card encounter has in store for me. And unless someone wants to do some math to figure out whether I've actually significantly lowered my chances to win right there by not re-rolling with the Clover, I'm just not going to consider that as a misplay. And again, none of the cards I need on the first row, and nothing really on the second row. So all I can do here is to take the River Otter, because it's the only one blood card. Maybe if I had like a major boom of the Bone Lord and I could take the Rattler, but I only got a minor boom, so it's going to be too hard to summon. Okay, a campfire that enhances power. This is good. Because now I can get a 3-1 on one of my two Mantises. And this is one of the reasons why I say that getting a Mantis is useful. Because even though it's not a Mantis God, it still has Bifurcated Strike, which means that the 3-1 Mantis is still going to be able to do 6 damage. So now I have yet another card that can let me win a battle on the first turn. And luckily, I get to immediately demonstrate that once again. This time, I neither drew the Hoarder Elk Fawn nor the Mantis God, but I did draw my 3-1 Mantis. So I don't need to wait for the Mantis God, because doing 6 damage first turn is still good enough to win. So the only pass I have going forwards is the Trapper Encounter. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this encounter, because 1. The Pal gets mixed into my deck, which I can end up drawing during a battle and make my deck less consistent. 2. I have to go to a Trader to actually get rid of the Pelt, which means that if there are multiple paths I could be taking, I get locked into taking the path with the Trader on it, so I have less options available. And 3. The Trader only offers me 8 cards and I can't reroll them with the Clover. So I have all these restrictions, but my chances are really only slightly better than a random card encounter with the Clover. So I prefer to just take the free Rabbit Pelt here and just leave, because I don't want to take more cards into my deck than I really have to. And that's why I took the Pricey Pelt Challenge, because having more expensive pelts doesn't really affect me if I'm not going to be buying any of them. Next up, the Woodcarver again. And this time, I get to choose between Bloodlust and Worsley Sacrifice. And unfortunately, neither Sigils matter, because all my cards are 1 blood and Bloodlust isn't really going to kick in if I'm winning in one turn. So I'll just keep Touch of Death once again, but this is why I say that the Woodcarver is unreliable. Because there's something like 30 Sigils to choose from, and she only ever offers 1 or 2 per encounter. Whereas by rerolling random cards with the Clover, I'm seeing 6 offers each time and there are only really around 50 cards. Granted, the Woodcarver won't ever offer duplicates, but even so, according to some simulations I did, it would still take an average of 9 visits to the Woodcarver to get Fecundity or Unkillable in combination with the Insect Head, whereas it would only take around 4-5 to five random card encounters to get a Cockroach or Field Mice. But then again, I'm also assuming every card in Sigil are equally likely, which I don't know if it's true or not, and could just change everything. But I got lucky here, and the very next encounter happens to be the Trader. And of course, it just so happens that he offers me both the Field Mice and the Cockroach. So it kind of sucks that I only have one Pelt, but honestly, it's so rare to get two good cards at the same time here, that I think taking only one Pelt is still the right call in general. So I'm going to take the Field Mice, because Fecundity is really just an objectively better version of Unkillable. Because instead of needing to wait until the card dies to get another copy, I can just get the second copy as soon as I play it, and I can also immediately play the second copy if I so choose. And good thing there's a Sigil Altar up ahead, because now I can immediately transfer Fecundity from the Field Mice onto the Mantis God. So my Mantis God is basically immortal now, but it sucks that my other 3 5 Mantis is still missing the unkillable Sigil. Although it looks like it doesn't really matter in the end, because it's boss time. And this time, I'm up against the Angler. Now, honestly, I think the Angler is probably the easiest boss with this deck and challenge setup. If he's encountered on map 1 and 2, he barely puts up a fight there. His entire phase 1 mechanic is that he will steal one of your cards every other turn, but I can easily just feed him my Aqua Squirrels which takes up his car zones and doesn't even protect him because of the Waterborne Sigil. So that's why I take the Squirrel Fist Challenge because its downside pretty much never comes into play in any battle, and actually just straight up helps me against the Angler boss. Now when the Angler is encountered on map 3, he is marginally more threatening because he'll put out bait buckets in phase 1, but that doesn't actually matter at all, because I almost certainly will have a 3-5 Mantis at this point and just win turn 1. Now, his entire thing in Phase 2 is that for every card on your side, he'll also put out a Bait Bucket in front of it, and once your card attacks it, a 4-2 Waterborne Great White spawns that will kill your card next turn and do 4 damage if you don't have something to block it. So the entire strategy to beat his Phase 2 
is to summon as few cards as possible in Phase 1, and then kill him in 1 or 2 turns on Phase 2. And that's literally what the Mantis God deck is all about. So this boss mechanic just straight up plays into my deck's greatest strength, and I just win instantly before he even gets a turn. And what do you know? I got a cockroach from the boss. So the no boss or challenge did play into my strategy after all. Alright, time for the grand finale. But first, I'm of course going to go for the Sigil Altar so I can put the Sigil from the Cockroach onto my 3-5 Mantis. So now, I'll be entering the final boss with an 8 card deck, with a Mantis God that can do 9 damage per turn, a Mantis that can do 6 damage per turn, and an Elk Font that can search out my Mantis God. That's an 82% chance that I draw what I need on the first turn, so I really like my odds here. Granted, my chances could have been even better if I had time to do something about the 1-1 Mantis, River Otter, Beehive, or Ringworm, but some amounts of RNG is unavoidable in a game like this, so time to just head to the last boss. The end is upon us. But actually, this is normally the only boss that I cannot win against on the first turn. And this is because he'll always start phase 1 with a Mole Man on the front row. So a 3-5 Mantis God will get 6 damage blocked and only deal out 3 damage on turn 1, and a 3-5 Mantis wouldn't deal any damage turn 1 at all. But usually there are plenty of ways around it, such as getting lucky enough to have a 5-5 Mantis God, using a scissor to remove the Mole Man, or just block the damage from his upcoming Amalgam and win on turn 2 instead. But luckily, I have an equally good play here. Since I still have the Touch of Death's Insect Totem, I can search out my Mantis God, and what's going to happen here is that the first attack will instantly kill the Mole Man, allowing attack 2 and 3 to go through unimpeded, so I actually do 6 damage after all, and instantly go into phase 2. Now, Phase 1 of this boss is probably the hardest out of all bosses, because he'll zerg you with the Swarm of Amalgam and Mantis Gods, while the Prospector, Anklu, and Trader mechanics are active on rotation. So if I can beat Phase 1 instantly like this, then he's got nothing against me in Phase 2 either. All he does here is spawn a stump in front of all of my cards, and then spawn a bunch of randomly generated death cards, which are mostly weaker than the Phase 1 Amalgam and Mantis Gods. Granted, he does still have all three boss mechanics active in this phase, but that's no match compared to me just winning instantly. So now, we fight against Phase 3, the Moon. But as awe-inspiring as this looks, it's really the easiest phase. The Moon can only do 1 damage to each card per turn, and it can't attack me directly as long as I have any non-squirrel card in play. So the only way for me to lose this is by running out of cards, which is impossible because now I have the Fecundity Sigil on the Mantis God and the Unkillable Sigil on the Mantis. If I manage to reach phase 3, then victory is all but assured. But yeah, with this strategy, I think I can beat challenge level 12 around 40 to 50% of the time. Because there are so many ways to improve the deck's consistency, and I'm also taking all the challenges that basically have no effect against this deck. So most of the 120 challenge points, I'm basically just getting for free. Oh, and I guess I should show my stats for anyone who's curious. And just so you know, this isn't my first playthrough of Challenge Level 12, because I did run it back a few times just to make sure that this strategy was consistent. But here's the screenshot for the stats for when I beat this challenge for the very first time. So I guess the only thing left to do now is to go for a 220 challenge point run, because there's no more challenge levels left. But I don't know if I'll actually go that far, because I don't really play single player games that much. But I guess that's it for the video, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.